So, uh, one of my uh, roles is I work for uh, an organization in London, in the UK, called What Three Words. And I will explain what that means and why it's called What Three Words uh, very shortly. The purpose of the three word addresses or the technology is to do these things. It's to improve customer experience. It's to help people scale their business or, or grow new opportunities. And it's also sometimes even to save lives, um, which sounds very grand, but hopefully I'll be able to back that, that claim up with some of the examples of the work that we're doing. So we've heard over the last couple of days that geographic information is key to a lot of decisions and what's going on. Um, one of the key tenets of geographic information is addressing, and the world is, is poorly addressed. I think if you've traveled at all in, in parts of the world, you'll, you'll realize that from the poor experience you'll have had. Four billion people don't have an address, and I guess based on Martin Yervin's presentation, I had to back that statement up. So that actually comes from uh, the United Nations Development Program. This is a figure they, they put together um, eight years ago. And as we heard in some of the sessions, and as we know from day to day, events are taking places all over the world in places that don't have addresses. And this is where what three words can help. So you have 75% of the world that's poorly addressed, but actually in the other 25%, there are still many, many issues with addressing. So we think it's sorted in many countries, but actually in the countries that have good addressing, there are still a very large number of issues. So when I say addressing, I'm also, I'm also talking about location referencing. So what three words provides a location reference? And the impact of poor addressing is, it, it covers almost every sector, whether that is humanitarian aid, or logistics, or travel and tourism, or getting from A to B. Let's say with a, if MD's ever used Uber, or Lyft, or Halo, I don't know if you've ever experienced the problem of you're standing here and your GPS is telling them you're somewhere else, or the, however the system they use is sending them somewhere where you're not, and so you have a problem for them finding you and then trying to go somewhere where they don't know where to go. So addresses, there, there are many different issues that um, addresses raise. This is a, a short video um, about one of, the, one of the uses of what three words in, um, okay, my mouse has disappeared. In uh, Cape Town in South Africa. What does it mean not to be on the map, to be off the grid? When you are in the bottom, it is the difference between sinking and swimming. The barrier to improving your life. If you don't exist on a map, how can you open a bank account? How can you vote? We all must prove where we belong. If the government cannot give us an address, then we have to look to other means. My name is Sizwen Zima, and I run a courier company that collects chronic medication parcels from public hospitals and clinics in local townships and delivers them to the patient's doorstep. I started the business because of my grandparents. So my grandparents had to go and collect chronic medication at the hospital. And as a young boy growing up with my grandparents, I saw them experience tough times in, in getting the medication. And as I grew up, I had that responsibility to actually go and collect those medication. And being at the clinic and sitting in those long queues and, and waiting for those long hours, I actually had an experience of how bad it was. Being in an environment where you can easily be vulnerable to get sick. And that's when I told myself, let me start the business that will focus on collecting medication for people and delivering them at their doorstep. Kalicha is like a maze. It's not an easy place to locate addresses. 
you know, when we started, we experienced some challenges. So that has been proven in the past with logistics companies not being able to really work out the routes and the addresses in Kailichi because of the way the township is structured in terms of informal roads, informal addresses, informal housing, and so on. An app like Watch Three Words can help us expand in terms of understanding our routes better with an app that will allow us to actually distinguish which is the shortest route that can really help us. That can also help us store the address on the map so that we don't have to get lost again. My dream is to be able to create more structure in terms of accessing or navigating the township maze. If you order something, it has to be delivered at your doorstep, irregardless of how informal the settlement is, regardless of how structured the settlement is. Getting access to medication, for me, is really important, and that's what I want to bring on the table. So Seasway is, he's now been made, uh, Forbes magazine have made him one of their 30 under 30. So he, he's been recognised for the work that he's done there. Um, now, many of us who've been involved in geomatics, surveying, GIS, whatever, we, you know, there is an option. Um, but it's a very small percentage of people who actually know and understand what this means. So it's very accurate, but these numbers are, are difficult to remember and use. It's good for machines. So what three words doesn't help. If you're doing machine to machine, you don't need what three words. You just stick to GPS coordinates a lot long. However, whenever it's used by humans, whenever there's a human intervention, that's where it adds value. And, and that's what I'll talk about. The reason it was formed was because there was a guy called Chris Sheldrick, who's our co-founder and CEO. And Chris was trying to deliver equipment, music equipment, to venues. And he, these venues were in the middle of nowhere. So he was giving people GPS coordinates, and they were writing them down wrong, and they were ending up in the wrong place. So it came from someone outside the industry who had an idea. They wanted to use a different way to communicate, something more human friendly. And that was how they put together the system. So for all the geo people or the, the addressing experts or people, people always say, but hang on, there's no hierarchy, there's no topology, there's no... These guys didn't know any of that. They didn't think about any of that. The system was, was designed for a very specific purpose and it's been enhanced since. So it's a global location reference system. So all it is is a conversion of lat long to three words and back. Nothing more than that. And, and people sometimes overcomplicate it. It really is just quite simple. It has three core, it's an algorithm. So there's no database. The whole thing is 10 megabytes and sits on a device. So the algorithm has three core methods, which I'll, I'll come back to. But you can see here, um, every, uh, every three by three meters has three words. That's just a conversion of the, the lat long. Um, the words are more memorable and easy, you know, easy to, to, to stay in your mind. So it's much easier to remember three, three words than an uh, uh, alphanumeric combination of words and letters. Words work everywhere. So you can text them, you can speak them, you, you know, it's our lingua franca. We use words every day. And the system has an auto-suggest and an auto-correct facility. Because the words are based on spelling, and spelling is finite, you can, if you make an error, the system will tell you you've made an error based on your location. So if you're in, if you're in America, let's say you were in New York, and you put in table chair lamp, well, table chair lamp is in Balmain in Sydney. So the system would say to you, did you mean table chair lamps? Because table chair lamp is thousands of kilometers away. Table chair lamps is, is just around the corner. So. If you start to use it and you type in errors, the system will correct your errors, which is good if you're like me and you've got fat fingers. So here you have 
Um, also, it works offline. So because it's 10 megabytes and it sits on a device, you don't need a data connection. You only need GPS. Now, that's really important for the countries we're serving, Africa, India, Latin America, Southeast Asia, where the infrastructure can be poor in some places and, and the data connection is not guaranteed. Um, and this is what I was saying, if you make a mistake, it will be corrected. You can also uh, batch convert all of your, your lat long. So if you have them in an Excel file, there's an Excel plugin and you can just, you can just put them in. You can do that. Um, the shorter words go into the populated areas and the longer words in the less populated areas. So in the oceans and the mountains and those areas, you'll have the long words. And in the cities, you'll have the shorter words. So my office is index home raft. Um, it comes now in uh, more than 10 languages. So we have, for English, for example, we use a dictionary of 40,000 words. So 40,000 by 40,000 by 40,000 give 64 trillion combinations. So that covers the whole world, all of those combinations. We actually only use 57 trillion of the 64 trillion. So we have a few extra trillion combinations. But we also have it in, these are some examples. This is Hungarian, Russian, Spanish, and German. Um, we've recently released Swahili. Arabic is coming quite soon. Greek is coming. Italian's just been released. Uh, it's a, it's a, you've also got Portuguese, French, and a number of other languages. So each language is a new dictionary. It's not a translation because the, the context and the meaning changes when you translate words. And also, if you think about, um, for example, snowman, which is one word in the system, in French is bonhomme de neige, which is three words. So there are many different reasons why we don't translate. It's a new dictionary for every language. And the, so the algorithm does the first pass on each language and it, re it removes all the rude words and the bad words. And then a team of native speakers review the combinations of the words and the words that remain. So something like 10 to 12 speakers, native speakers will review over a three to six month period the words that are in the system. So we're working at the moment on uh, a number of Indian languages and we have about 15 different people reviewing those different languages. So it's a, it, we call it a common communication language because it cuts across all the work we're doing as in all these sectors. We're working around the world in many, many different sectors. And almost every day, something new comes up. I mean, I, I now learn about applications from our website because I can't keep up with the, the, the number of new things that are happening. So you can go in, the app is free. Uh, on Android or iOS, you can go in, you can download the app and you can start to find, uh, you can put in whatever you want. You can put in your postcode, a street address, a POI, a business name, whatever you want. Then you can zoom into the, the grid and you, you can see here the three by three meter squares. And you can start to, you can, whether you want your, your front door, your side entrance, your back porch, the entrance to a school, whatever you want to give the, the address or the location reference to, you can decide using the grid. So you can switch the imagery on and off depending how you want to use it. Um, and these are, these are the, the websites to go and do that. Um, so as I said, it's, uh, it's a couple of lines of code. The API itself has three, three core methods. It has lat long to position, and position is word dot word dot word, and then it has position to lat long, and then it has a dictionary for whichever language you're using. It's integrated into what we've called GIS infrastructure. So the big integration for us is Esri. Um, if you go to what3words.com slash Esri, you will see that we have what's called a locator for ArcGIS. Um, and I'll be presenting a number of Esri use cases um, the week after next in, in Washington, DC. Um, safe software, there's a transformer for what three words with safe software. So you can what three words encode and what three words decode using that. Um, one spatial, um, have a tool that's a data quality tool that also works with ArcGIS. They're embedding it, mappable, uh, mapillary. So we now have um, something like 45 different integrations where people are, are using the three word addresses in their, in their tools. 
and it's used in, uh, by, by people in, in many, many different countries around the world. Uh, this is a, a UN app called UN Assign for um, disaster management. Um, this is a data collector. This is for uh, energy in India. So the, uh, the British Museum took 1.2 million artifacts, archaeological digs, and they've now given a three-word address to every archaeological dig that they've done. So it's been used to monitor election violence in Tanzania. Um, it's been built into uh, a number of different systems in here for, for uh, things like wildfire monitoring for emergency response. Th this is really, this to me, this testimonial sums it up very nicely. So many people say, well, why don't I just use lat long? And it's, well, yes, you can, but there are many, many people who don't understand lat long and who are not comfortable. And a lot of those people are people who are working out in the field, who are remote workers. And I was speaking to Martin yesterday, and he said, well, how would, how would I use it? How would someone use it? And we got chatting, and he said, well, actually, someone went, and they, they, they dug into a pipe, and then that exploded, and then the impact of that was enormous. And I said, well, if they'd had the three-word address of where not to dig instead of maybe that long, that's what people are actually doing. We now have people coming to us for things like asset management, where they're using things like linear referencing, and their linear referencing is, well, go along, and then above ground, look for the third pylon, and near that, there's a blue point, and that's where you shouldn't be. And, and it's stuff like that. So if we can give a, a human-friendly way to describe a location in three words, then, then that's, that's really quite powerful. So I think this, this, this uh, testimonial, this quote is really quite powerful for me. Um, there's a little festival in the UK called Glastonbury. And Glastonbury has a couple of hundred thousand people who attend. FMS, Festival Medical Services, they were using satellite imagery and uh, a 100 by 100 meter grid. They're now using the 3 by 3 meter grid and they're able to send people to a very precise, what we call a, a hyper-local um, uh, destination. So this is what they've said. Um, you know, th their experience of managing logistics for people in remote areas is, is very difficult, and it's the ambiguity. So if you have lots and lots of lat longs together, they actually all look very similar, but the, the, the way what three words is described is actually purposely you don't have words next to each other. So you won't have lots of table lamp, chair, table lamp, banana, table lamp, whatever. They're purposely away from each other to make it less ambiguous. And for people in the Western world, this is really hard because we are used to hierarchy in addressing and stuff. And we're used to number 38 being close to number 40. And, and the system is very different from it. Um, this is something we're, we're working on. One of my colleagues gets to go to Tahoe to film this and do a bit of skiing. Um, but this is an emergency thing for, for, for skiers. So they can actually say where they are when, if you're like me, you fall over and hit your head somewhere. You can say, I'm, I'm at these three words, come, come, and, come and get me, or at least you know, bring some whiskey or something. Um, this is Tenzing, they're an Esri partner. Uh, they have built into their CCR 360, Command and Control Response 360 solution. So now, in a Command and Control Response Center, they have a three-word uh, address as an option built into that system. USAID, uh, we're working with them in Rwanda, so they're coordinating all their, their projects. They had the problems I was describing about people recording GPS coordinates, they had that problem. And then they came across what three words, and now they're using us for their projects in Rwanda, and they're rolling us out into other regions. Uh, Lebanon's another area where we're doing a project with them. This is uh, Seasway, so delivering medicine, using the three word addresses, you saw that. Um, being used in India, where they're trying to monitor people using kerosene in tents, which is not ideal, and they're trying to move them to battery and solar power. So they want to identify where the people are in the tents and they're using the three by three meter grid. Um, another quote from the crisis response journal, um, again, you can, you'll see that, in, I'll leave that in the presentation. This is the UN Assign app that I was talking about, where when they record 
a, a disaster. So they take a photo, they geotag the photo, and at the same time, in their, their library, they ha they'll record the three-word address. So wherever they are, they can now, to a three-by-three-metre level, record it. Now, I know one of the questions usually is, well, how accurate is it? What's well, as accurate as the device they have? So if the GPS is only accurate to, let's say, 50 metres, it'll get them within 50 metres of where they are. But in some areas, you can get five to 10 metres. Um, and the UN have said, you know, if you're thinking about tweeting during an emergency or disaster, well, you know, think about putting your, your, your what, three words, your three word address of where you are as well. Um, so we have this, uh, this kind of thing, you know, use it, make something and share it. That's, that's kind of what we're doing. Um, it's been given a lot of uh, coverage We've been in the BBC. The video we, I showed you earlier, that was done with some people who were formerly with the BBC. Um, BBC, Financial Times, Bloomberg, we're getting a lot of coverage because we're doing something that is very different. There are alternatives. There are people who have created other codes, but they're still alphanumeric. So from our perspective, we don't see the point. We, we're only words, and we're so different that it's not confusing. With, if you still have an alphanumeric, why don't you just use lat long? Because that's what that is. So there are other systems, but we, we think we've got a different approach. Um, and so do other people. We've won a lot of awards. Um, we won another one last night from KPMG to go to Mobile World Congress. Um, this is me at the UN getting an award from the Universal Postal Union. Um, we won the Tech for Good Awards for BT. So we're, we're winning a lot of stuff um, and hopefully, you know, getting more engagement and, and, and getting people to speak. So we get to speak around the world. We get invited to do big talks and, uh, you know, most of us are on a plane going, going to present what we're doing. And, you know, it's, it, it's very, very inexpensive. I mean, if you want, to, if you want the app, as I said, the app's for free. Um, and if you're doing something in humanitarian, there's, a, there's an admin fee of $150, which is pretty much nothing if you look at a lot of how, how the finances work there. Um, how we make our money is we get people like FedEx, DPD, UPS, and others to pay us to use this system. Because I know Navtech, for example, they claim to have about 250 million addresses. Well, we, ha we have billions of addresses. So think about the way people use landmarks to deliver things. They can still use the landmark. We're not replacing that. And they can still use a street address, whether they have like, whether it's Ronald Reagan Drive or wherever it is in these different countries. But you can now give a very precise location on that with a three word address. So that's it. Hopefully I've explained a bit more and given you some, some ideas and told you what it is and what it isn't. Um, and I'm guessing there might be one or two questions. Thank you.